it's Rachel. I wanted to show the super simple crop rotation technique that I've come up with over the last several years. It works really well for me and I thought it might be useful. If you bought a planner from me, you've already seen this in there. Uh, I explain it and lay it out, but I wanted to do a video on it for everyone else. The key to it is I divide my beds into two types. There are summer crop beds which also get overwintering vegetables. And then there are spring slash fall beds. So that's type number two. The reason this works is your plant families are really different. Your summer crops typically include tomatoes, peppers would be solanaceae, eggplant would be the same. Your squash plants and your cucumbers and your melons are all going to be in cucurbitaceae. Um, so those two plant families are pretty heavily represented. Basil is the mint family, um, and if you have beans, that would be the, the legumes, right? Now your spring and your fall crops tend to be brassicas, um, chen, I think it's chenopidaceae, bear with me on my Latin, uh, would be like your, your Swiss chard and your spinach and your beets and those kinds of spring and fall crops. And then things like arugula and radish are also brassicas. You get some kind of concentrated plant families, but if one year they are summer winter beds, and then the next year they are spring fall beds, you generally get a pretty decent crop rotation going and you don't get too much concentration. I also use this to work in cover crops. The reason cover crops are important, so this bed this year, which was a summer bed, I believe had verticillium wilt. We had a 300 year flood, so it could also just have been from flooding but the symptoms looked very, very suspicious. Um, and so I'm pretty sure I have a disease. There's, I'm not gonna grow any Solanaceae in this bed this year because it's a spring fall bed, so that will help. This is going to be my summer crops. Um, it's covered up partly to keep birds from eating the seed, but it's mostly to warm up the soil. And I put a spring cover crop in it that is specifically designed to help and prevent that uh, from happening to the summer crops this year. What I put in is a mix of um, tiller radish, which will help break up the soil, break up the clay, and improve drainage this year. I also included mustards in the mix. Those are soil fumigants, and they will help to hopefully drive out some of that verticillium wilt if it got into this bed as well. Also included um, some legumes in the mix to fix nitrogen, because the summer crops that are going to come in here are going to be very heavy feeders, and it's nice to get the nitrogen in the soil ahead of those crops coming in. I will show this kind of circular view to give more detail for those that are interested. The summer bed starts with the spring cover crop. I let that grow to maturity. I terminate it and I give it two weeks to decompose before their summer crops come in. At a certain point in the summer, I will underplant this with the fall cover crop. And I like to use for that things that are going to kill back um, in the winter naturally so I don't have to terminate them. I just let them grow up underneath the summer crops. They help shade the soil, they help retain moisture, and then they'll just die in the winter. And then the spring and fall beds don't have a cover crop in them right now. Um, they actually still have the crops in them from last winter in this, in this bed's case. So I let those kind of grow again in the spring. But what I'll do is come in, start with the spring crops, and then I will underplant them with buckwheat and that is my very short cover crop that goes between the spring and the fall vegetables. So the buckwheat will grow in only six weeks, set flowers, and then I can cut it down. I'll terminate those and again, wait two weeks before I put in the fall crops. And so that's how I work in cover crops and do this overall rotation. Combining this to a multi-year view for you, start at the gold star. This is a summer winter bed. You start with a spring cover, terminate that, put in the summer crops in early June. I underplant that with fall cover. All of that is ultimately terminated and the winter crops go in. They mature until we hit the Persephone period, at which point we hit less than 10 hours of daylight and they essentially just hang out. But you can follow that blue arrow over to the right and start moving counterclockwise. In the spring, the winter growth uh, comes back and I'll get maybe one or more harvests off of them before I terminate them for the spring crops. Underplant that with buckwheat, allow that to grow, terminate, and convert to the fall crops. Those are underplanted with a winter-killed cover crop, 
we go through Persephone in the winter, cover crop dies back, and we start it all over again on the left, kind of follow this gray arrow around. The nice thing about this, you ideally you would get multiple years in between types of plants and families, but at least with this, it's very simple, it's easy to use, and you get a solid year in between and a nice variety of families rotating through on any given year. For me, this works really well. It's simple. I don't have to overthink it. I just have to remember which bed is a winter bed in summer and which one is a spring and fall, and that's not too hard for me to do. I also really do encourage you to include some cover crops if you can. It helps keep your soil balanced. It helps feed those micro herds underneath, and it helps to prevent too much concentration of any one pest or disease. All of that is really, really simple if you just break it into these two bed types. So I hope that was helpful as always. If you have any questions, comments, um, specific cover crops that you like to use as an example or other ways that you do rotation, please drop a note. And if you've got a question, I will try and answer it as quickly as I can. That's it for now. Thanks.